Hi, I'm Jason Thornton from Tritex Games Limited. I'm here to, to review the latest set of miniatures from WizKids, the Dungeons & Dragons Set 3, Rage of Demons. I found with this set the miniatures have just gone from strength to strength. The really good paintwork, really good um, detailed miniatures and actually ones that fit really well with the game uh, in respect of to size and the way I would expect the miniatures to look. I actually found leading up to the set's release there was very few images online of the actual miniatures themselves so it was very difficult to uh, to find out exactly what was included in the set but I have to say I'm quite pleased with what they've actually produced. So I thought I'd just give a, a little bit of a, a review now so you can have a look at the miniatures up close and get a feel for um, you know which ones would actually fit your collection. So without further ado, let's start. Okay, the first one we're going to look at is the Darrow. Little Darrow Dwarf there. And uh, the back of him. Very tiny little figure, perfect proportion. I find with these miniatures they're all about 28mm scale and they fit perfectly with um, with regards to other miniatures you might find in the Dean the Pathfinder range. We then have the uh, Dretch Demon. If I can find him in this set somewhere. Looks very much like a cow like little miniature. Quite yeah, quite hunched back in his own little way. Right, then we have um, the Goblin Archer. This guy's roughly about uh, about 15 millimeter, 15 20 millimeter tall. Not my strongest figure. I think I've seen better archers before, but certainly a nice little figure. And we have the Cobalt Soldier. I like this figure because I love it. I love his little tail at the back. I think its tail is really good proportion. It seems to fit with the character, and the face on that, the facial expression on the figure is very very good. And have little quasits. Now I've seen quasits before from D and D, uh, pretty much in the Giants Legend site. Not anywhere near in detail in this. This actually looks like a little character. Actually looks like he could be a little bit of a kobold as well, green kobold. But uh, yeah, great character. Love his little tail. And we have the Duragar soldier. Looks kind of like a female character, but I think it's supposed to be. Uh, that's the way it's supposed to be orientated. Not quite as blue as I've seen them before. It's quite nice. The cockatrice. I actually love this figure. I think this is brilliant. I think cockatrice have featured very well in my in my role playing campaigns before, but I always like the, the the one that came with the against the giant set. Just never really sort of lived up to expectation of a cockatrice. This one looks quite like a a featherless chicken, which is kind of how I, I pictured it. And you've got the dwarf wizard. Nice little light on the top of his, his staff there. Yep, very good. Always a popular little piece. And you get the etta cap. But a couple of etta caps one from the uh, Giants of Legend and one that was set from the Dean Wedge set in, in the old sets. But I think this one's done it in right detail and I think it fits in proportion with the other ones we've already seen before. So, yeah, very impressed with that one. Then we've got the Kuatoa. Not quite sure how you pronounce that, but uh, Kuatoa. That little sort of frog like creature. Definitely looks a little bit very, very fishy to me. Looks like salmon. Perfect little figure. He's around about, so probably about 28, 30 millimeters tall. Um, right. Down. We have the human wizard. Nice little human wizard there. Fairly straightforward. Pretty much bespoke what you'd expect from a human wizard. Nice little flowing cape. Quite a good design. I love this guy. This is a lizard folk, lizard folk soldier. And uh, yeah, really nice, really nice detailed character. Love his shield. I think it looks it looks pretty much like what I expect a lizard, lizard folk to look like. Yeah, really impressed with that one. 
for his little face. And if you can see up close, you can see his sort of face and detail that he's got on there. Excellent little face. And we've got the um, Hobgoblin Soldier. Fiery faced, quite nice, quite nice plate mail set there. Looks quite quite aggressive in his pose. I've got a Drow Scout. Looks very much like a thief type character with little daggers. Certainly uh, nice little nice pose. Quite good facial features. Great position. Twin daggers for for, for any Drow thief character. That you might have. Then we've got the uh, Kuratoa Arch Beast, obviously gone purple with age, holding his uh, rod there. Looks like he's actually almost cheering on the crowd. Oops, dropped him. Got the Drow Captain, a crossbow. And long sword. Female character, female drow. Less chunky than the male version, but again, quite good proportion for the figure. Fits the type. Got the quagloth. You shouldn't pronounce that. I think quagroth is what they pronounce. Again, we've seen the quagroth slave before uh, from war drums. I think that's um, more of what I expect it to be as a sort of bestial type character. Great little figure that. Oh. And we got that. What is I have to put this one together? This is a shadow demon. Um, this one comes in a lot of the, the bigger pieces now, and, and, and some of them come in little with podiums that you need to stand on the podium. Um, but again, this is quite transparent. Great looking figure. Quite a mean looking shadow demon. And we've got the, um, what else we got here? We've got the Banshee, a Banshee. Again, quite a translucent figure from Banshee. I'm not quite sure if you can see all the detail. Probably easier if I put my hand behind it so you can see it. Very translucent, very sort of ghost-like miniature. I do like this translucent uh, effect on these figures. I think it just really brings them out. Quite a scary looking, Banshee looking figure. Right, you've got the, the two Myrodons that so you've got with this. You've got the Water Myrodon, which is where, with his trident. Again, quite transparent, a little bit of a silver painting on uh, to give it the armour effect. Quite a nice looking uh, miniature there. And then you've got the Air Myrodon, which I think is more my favourite. I think with uh, a yeah, really nice looking figure. Could also work as a, as a little elemental or, or some sort of eternal creature. A lot of detail there on, on the, the way the armour's been put together. We've got a Grimlock. A little mace. Oh. Little pouch. Been quite aggressive there. And uh, yeah, we've got the some of the bigger figures we've got I'll come back to I'll probably go on some of the rare figures which we've uh, we've got we've got a Zorn is it Zorn or Quorn I think people have different ways of pronouncing this so it's got little teeth there if you can see his little horrible mouth if you want to get caught in that little ele earth elemental creature the lies all around scary little thing to encounter Got a uh, rust monster. Now, I think this is this is particularly one of my favourite ones. This one, I think, is a great rust monster. Real looks like uh, what I'd expect a rust monster to look like. Looks a bit sort of the previous one we'd seen. I think it was in Dangerous Delves, um, so it didn't really sort of, kind of live up to my expectations. But I think this one really looks like it's it's quite a bit mean. So to be uh, give the fighter something to be scared of. It's quite a rare miniature. I think what it's worth saying, actually, notice on this set is that whereas previous WizCodes um, sets have always been, if you bought a case, you could get pretty much a complete set. I found that the distribution on some of the rarer miniatures in this set has become very scarce, 
Um, I certainly opened many cases and, and, and actually some of the rares, rares I got one of each and one of them actually didn't get the Copper Dragon which is kind of frustrating. I know there's two Ultra Rares from the set which are both uh, um, which are impressive which are the um, the Shadow Beholder and the Shadow Gold Dragon and those are incredibly hard to get hold of but um, and I expect the Invisibles to be harder but to get the Rares being quite a low distribution is quite a bit of a, short, bit of a shortcoming for some people I know some people find that quite disappointing um, right what else have we got here then we've got the um, before I go into the big figures we've got the Grell never really used a Grell in a campaign the previous one I've seen in Death Knell wasn't really up to much expectation but again sort of seems to fit what, what you'd expect the character to look like got some great little tendrils there hovered above the ground um, got the Mind Flare again this is a, a Lich or, um, a Lich Mind Flare vicious looking thing Again, very rare. I've only got one of these, so I expect it to sell pretty damn fast. Always popular figures in, uh, in higher level campaigns and mind flowers, eating those brains. We have the Elf Archer, the Wood Elf Archer. Quite a nice model, actually, for a Wood Elf. I've seen a lot of Wood Elves in the past. It's quite strange to see a Wood Elf being a rare figure. Normally Wood Elves are sort of fairly common figures, so uh, quite surprised that they've decided to make that one a rare. But uh, yeah, quite nice little looking miniature. We've got the Blink Dog. I've used Blink Dogs before in my campaign. Quite an, an frustrating when they get into a pack and then blinking all over the place and disappearing and teleporting. And I think it's worth this point bringing out the, uh, the Invisible Blink Dog as well, which is a uh, special, uh, very rare miniature which is uh, almost exact metal like etc as you can see but the invisible version quite collectible let me mention that okay then we've got the um, you've got the beholder kin um, this one's uh, just with the, the small ones, I've got a way to tell you the book older, but I think this one's great. I love his tongue, I think he's fantastic. Haven't really seen these since the earlier sets, actually, Beholderkin. So it's nice to see them making a comeback, because I think they're quite used again, in a lot of high level campaigns. People tend to use other Beholders. I think his tongue is fairly mean. Um, right, let's look at some of the bigger miniatures that we've got that, that came in. We've got this great troll. I think the troll is uh, an exceptional troll. I've seen a lot of trolls lately and they all seem to be a bit comical um, whereas I think this troll actually tends to really look what I typically expect a troll to look like. I'm just giving you a, an idea of scale as well if I bring the wood elf beside it again you can get an idea of the scale of the model. Um, certainly decent scale. I love those claws. Those claws are fairly vicious looking cool. Yeah. Proper, look, proper looking troll that one. I think I'll keep the scale up there because I think it'll make it a little bit easier when I look at this. Right, we then got the carrion crawler. Everyone sort of encounters these, so they can be a frustrating thing on a low level campaign, but um, paralyzing you. I think they've really got their head, head, head around this one. I think all the, pilot, the ones in the past seem to be a bit weird, they all seem to be a bit smiley. Um, Certainly against the giants and some of those ones, whereas this one tends to really give you that, they give you the creeps. What a carrion crawler really looks like. What a mean-looking character. Then we've got the Roper. Okay, the smile's back. Stalagmite. Ooh, lost him. There we go. He's gone flying. There's the Roper. Um. Get your little wood elf before side, you can see the side. I do a scale again. Yeah, I found myself quite a victim of this guy in various campaigns in a long time. Again, not a bad looking character. I'm not sure about the red lips, but the red eye certainly sort of does it justice. Be a looking vicious thing. And we've got Driders. Driders are very popular characters. I always find that these uh, they tend to typically find, turn out if you go into any Underdark Town campaign, you'll encounter Driders. 
and uh, I, I think it's a particular nice one. Uh, the Wadridas in the past all seemed very small. This one tends to give you a real scale of a of a quite a fearsome looking warrior. Um, proper spotty, spider body and I love the claw that's sort of reaching up there. Okay, we've got a few um, others. We've got the Hook Horror. And again, I've seen Hook Horrors from um, the Underdark set. It's Underdark set. Um, and Hallowed set certainly had a, had a, had a Hook Horror. Um, I think it's Aberrations had one. Not a bad looking one. I don't think there's much difference. Um, yeah, but certainly looks uh, quite vicious enough. It's certainly one that keeps turning up in campaigns, a bit like the Umber Hulk. Um, Turns up in an awful lot of campaigns or horrors. Strange looking beast. Okay, then we've got the again these these uh, figures tend to come in multiple parts. This is a nightmare. Um, you'll tend to find that when you fit these, you have to fit them into. They have a little slot. If you can just see from. Uh, they have like a slot that has like a, a little bit of an angle to it. You need to make sure that that goes in first to the figure, um, because then fit it in the right angle. Otherwise, it won't it won't stick. And then you need to stick that in the base. But I will stick it into the figure first before you stick it into the base, so you don't end up breaking the breaking the base. This is the the nightmare. Translucent hair. Nightmares are quite popular. I think high level campaigns. More of an encountering one rather than riding one, but it's uh, certainly a good looking little beast. That we've got the uh, Vrock Demon, bird like character. Again, comes in a few parts you have to put together. I've seen a few Vrock Demons before. Um, Dungeons of Dread had one. I, like, I kind of like this one, it sort of makes more sense. It's flying. Uh, the first one I've seen flying, and it's it. I think I like, I like the, the detail. I love the detail of the hands of this. I don't know if you can see the scale on that, but you can see the actual how thin the, the hands are and how much detail they put in. And not necessarily delicate either. The, the wings are quite quite movable, the, uh, you know, so they're not likely to just fall apart on you. We've got the Jinn. The Jinn and the Freet, part of a set of two, really. Jinn and the Freet. Um, again, floating. Quite like that. A lot of the gins I've seen in the past have been standing still. Uh, Angel Fire, for instance, um, and against the Giants had one. Um, this one looks like a, a representation of an expected gin to look like. And then his partner in crime is Ifrit, translucent fire from the from the bottom there, and yeah, quite mean looking characters. Again, quite it, it come in three pieces. You have to put the pole in and the the base again, but uh, yeah, good looking characters. Good representations of what the uh, the characters are, I believe. Right, then you get um, the the other demon of the set. Nice looking, uh, mean looking creature. This one. This is I'm, I, I always struggle, struggle to pronounce this one. It's the uh, the Nalfreshini demon. Nalfreshini demon. Wow, it's a mean looking character. I've actually encountered these. I've actually used these in a high level campaign myself. Um, and this, I think, is probably the best representation. I've seen the other one we had before, which is um, which is just too big. I felt. I think this one really works. It's the right size of size for what you need. Big fat sort of pig like boar like character wings on the back again quite a rare character um, quite difficult to find so um, not sure if you'll get one in every case but okay um, this is this is one's gonna be it's a small one again but this is a half orc paladin again one of my particular favorites I thought his armor was very 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 good I thought done a really good representation and again quite popular in campaigns People tend to like the half orc paladin for, the, for their strength, and um, I mean, if you wanted to, you could always paint his paint his face blue if you wanted to. Uh, sorry, blue. Uh, paint his face pink if you wanted to make him a human, but because uh, certainly he's got that look. look not necessarily um, orcish. You could quite easily override that, but certainly a nice looking figure. Put the plate mail on that. 
and you've got the um, let's pick the big ones I think we've got here we've got a gold dragon beautiful gold dragon this one's fairly incredible this one a lot of detail on this Being quite a rare miniature. Look at it. If you look at the details of that, just on on it on its on the top here, you see the the whiskers of it. Very thin. Again, quite strong, quite quite durable. It can move, but um, beautiful gold representation, real gold flavour. Actually, looks like it's gold plated. It's a beautiful figure. I would have liked to see the shadow one. There's a shadow um, version of this, which is very very rare. Um, I haven't found any in any of the cases I've got. I know it's going for some quite quite a reasonable price online, um, but certainly looks like a, a it could be nice to have a shadow dragon in this in this format. So yeah, beautiful uh, gold dragon there. Then we have the lich dragon. Now I'm going to uh, take this base off. Actually, I think it's probably easier just to show these ones because they're quite big. So this is a lich dragon. This is the the first of the the dragons, the uh, the red red lich dragon. I think it's important to note as well that this comes in uh, in various pieces, so you actually have to detach the wings, as well as the base on this. If you can see its face there, it's. Uh... But yeah, the wings actually detach from this, so when you first get the figure, it actually comes with the wings off. And they just slot into the all the side bits there. You have to slot them back in again. Be very careful. Probably worth gluing if you're going to use it as a as a, as a permanent piece. If you're going, to, I think it's there for transportation. It's quite useful. And you got the Chasmy Demon. It's like an insectoid type thing. Flying base. I not really use those in any of my campaigns so far, but I know they're quite popular. Looks like a sturge, of a mean beak-like creature. Okay, we've got the... Um, I've got another invisible here, I actually got... There's, there's, there's two other invisibles. There's the invisible um, mind flare, which I didn't get, but I did get the invisible um, wizard. Uh, only again, I only got one of those again, so I'm going to have to go I've, I've opened pretty much all my cases, so I'm going to have to buy more now to, to get more of these. But uh, again, very rare figure, quite useful for campaigns. The amount of time you go invisible in the DD campaign, if it it's your character. Um, what else we got that we haven't shown so far? Um, doo -doo -doo. Got the Null Champion of, again, this is going to be another one of those words, uh, Champion of Vino Gu. Null Champion of Vino Gu, so quite a uh, interesting looking character. He's got like a flail there. Big shield. Love the detail, certainly uh, quite a scary looking character, so it looks like a champion in my book. I'll give you an idea of a scale on that one if I get you the, the Wood Elf Soldier again that we've done before. Should give an idea of a scale. Excuse the fingers. So it gives you an idea of the what they look like. Cool. And we've got the uh what are a few others we've got here. We've got the Bugbear Hunter. Quite a small little character. Extremely rare again, another one that took a few a few cases just to find one of these. So if you found one in your case, you're very lucky. Quite a strange again, bugbear's not used to seeing as being rare, but so uh, quite surprised to find them being a rare figure. In the pack. Okay, we're coming towards the end of it now. We've not got many more to, to many more to find. Um, got the dread guard. Ooh, here we go. Trying to find his way. Gold armor. Getting quite detailed. I like that. I like the amount of detail they put. If you look at the amount of detail on the shield and stuff, it just makes it really, really well. They've done an excellent job. I think the more the more professional painters out there would probably want to just give them a quite wash and think just a little bit of a dry brush to sort of tidy them up. But I think uh, 
you know, certainly done a decent job on the painting this time. Okay, so I didn't get the Copper Dragon, that's the one I would like to have shown, that's one from Fortune of Man only, because if I get, uh, I get one, I'll, I'll maybe add an extra um, to this, just to, to show you the uh, the Copper Dragon off. And then the last one that I do want to show, which I'm really excited about, is the Beholder. Uh, this is the Beholder, it's probably the most, the best Beholder I've seen so far, phenomenal figure really really big I mean that's if you look at the death nail one by size it's just it's just pills by comparison this one is an absolute beauty um, not quite as big as the one that came from uh, legendary evils which I think personally was too big uh, this one's an absolute cracker it's got some phenomenal tendrils I love that love the teeth if you look at the detail of the teeth the you can kind of go in there they're quite sharp inside and just to give you an idea of scale again just uh, again using the wood elf fighter as representation you can see that uh, yeah I think personally it's a perfect scale for the for the figure so uh, look at that eyeball that'll sort of give you a few nightmares so yeah certainly a very popular figure I, I expect to sell out this one the next <laughs> probably the next day and uh, yeah I think uh, the price on him is going to rise quite considerably because he's a beautiful beautiful figure uh, probably the best it's the kind of one that you you can't just want sitting on the mantelpiece you know just to scare people as they come in the door so uh, certainly terrify a few uh, higher level campaigners and if uh, he's got a little baby beside him which is the uh, beholder kin gives you an idea of scale there as well so yeah beautiful piece so that's it really um, uh, the uh, the only one I haven't really shown you is the is the uh, the white uh, lich dragon the limited edition one so I'm gonna go get one of those I'm gonna open one up while we're actually here because I haven't actually put one together myself so I just thought it'd be interesting to sort of see if I can open one up so I'll be back in two seconds and show you what that one looks like Here we are, comes in the limited box, so uh, quite excited to see how this looks like. I've seen it on the pictures. I actually think the limited edition figures that they produce with the sets are actually really good. And uh, I know they're very collectible, they're only around for a very short while. Like all the, all the figures really, you have to get them while you can. Um, but White Dracolich, I actually faced one of these when I was about 20 level mage in the past. Quite a nasty character, by all accounts. Right. Oh, this is the bad boy. Oh, quite interesting. This, this bad boy seems to comes in a single piece, which is quite unusual for these ones. Normally the dragons come with extra wings attached, so uh, quite pleased now. They're making things a little bit easier on us. So this is the uh, Lich Dragon. Carefully remove this thing. When we look at the White Dragon Lich, we used to have a Death Knoll, the tiny little figure. This I think this one sort of like just as fast as all, all hope and expectation. Take it out. And a look at piece. Looks like it comes. The base will obviously come separately again. Uh, but that's the white dracolich. Oh, look at that. Look at the detail on the uh, on the wings. And the tail there. Yeah, a cracking size uh, figure. That. And then the, the, the carriage as well. Give you an idea of scale again, just because I know you like that. Let's get the uh, little wood elf back again and uh, get an idea of the, what the scale of him versus the uh, wood elf. Probably not as big as some of the limited edition ones I've seen before, but I think from a Dracolich it, it probably fits up because the white dragon tends to be a smaller dragon anyway. So, uh, yeah, that's a limited dragon, white dragon one that you could get if you've got a case incentive. There's a few still sort of sitting around online and things like that, but uh, yeah, and that's it. That's my uh, brief review of the set so as I said it's uh, I think it's a great great set I think they've progressively got it better with the the detail on the figures and the painting of the figures and uh, hopefully when you get yours you'll enjoy them and uh, use them for many campaigns to come so thanks for listening I, 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 I thank you for uh, your support and continued support of uh, Tritex Games Limited and, uh, and wait till the next uh, review of uh, set 4 which is uh, coming out around about December time thank you very much cheers bye bye